I wanted to talk today about tweeters, particularly Linium tweeters. I have a couple pages of notes here. Hopefully I don't get lost. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about the company and the design of the tweeters, how they work, and some examples of speaker systems that used them back in the day. And also, the technology is still being improved and developed and is used in some newer speaker systems, which I'll talk about in a little bit, if you already don't know that, because it's high-end stuff. But this is the old school type that's in my Optimus Pro LX52 speakers. And in my opinion, it's a very interesting design, and they still sound very nice. But I think some of the speaker systems that they were used in back then, um, you know, may be able to compete a little bit with some of the modern speaker systems. I don't know, but I haven't heard any. But I think it'd be a delight to listen to some of the newer ones that are out there that they're making now. But if you haven't watched my older video that I made on uh, replacing the crossovers, in the LX5s that uh, they were the crossover was designed by a fellow named Larry Van Woolmer. And if you're interested in uh, viewing it, go ahead. Uh, it, you know, but if I were to do it again, I'd probably do it a little different because it ended up being a little messy because I used Acoustex sound dampening material on the inside, which it was a little messier than I wanted it to be, but it worked fine. If I were to do another pair, I'd probably use something different in there. But anyway, a little history. Back in 1983, Paul Paddock and Ben Stutz started a company called Intensity Incorporated, and then they changed the name in 1986 to Floating Membranes Incorporated, and changed the name again to the Linium Corporation, and then to shortened it to Linium Corp in 1989. Now, Paul had an idea for a unique speaker design, which uh, that under the uh, Linium Corporation or Corp name, they had 27 total patents at the time. Now, an early patent described the design as an audio transducer, having a voice coil formed by an etched flexible circuit, elongated, oblong spiral loop, and rolled into a cylindrical tube. So there are two types. There was a monopole and a dipole version back then. The monopole version works similar to conventional speaker that, and that it rota uh, uh, reflects the sound and radiates the sound in the direction that is pointed. But the dipole version radiates the sound from the front and also the sound equally from the rear, but it's out of phase. Now, and that's why you see the Linium tweeter sitting on top of a speaker. The What's coming from the rear is out of phase with what's coming from the front. And also, interesting enough, the, the connections to the tweeter are wired and reverse the polarity and I'm assuming because of how they work you want to keep it in phase with the woofer. So notice the flexible mylar ribbon on both sides of the tweeter. They're a little bit dusty but you can see the mylar So that's what actually vibrates. And if we turn it around, so this is what makes it a dipole speaker because it's 360 degrees. So you have the same on the back end. Now you can see from the original patent drawing that the magnets on either side are in opposite polarity, I mean the uh, front and back magnet, and when the signal flows through the coil, its magnetic field reacts with the magnetic field of the speaker magnets and causes a whole mylar ribbon assembly to 
move forward and backward, which of course produces the sound wave. Now years ago, I think it seems to me that linium was more notably known for the tweeter, but they also manufactured various types of speakers that use that technology. The top of the line was the Model 10. Now it had a frequency response of 32 to 20,000 hertz and contained a 1.5 inch dipole linium tweeter and one eight inch woofer. The Model 11 was a little bit smaller and it had a frequency range of 40 to 20,000 hertz and it contained a 1.5 inch dipole tweeter and a 6.6 .6 inch woofer. Now they also made a center channel speaker and it had a response of 50 to 20,000 hertz and it contained a 1.5 inch dipole tweeter and two five and a quarter woofers. Now the tower speakers that they sold had a response of 45 to 20,000 hertz and they contained a 1.5 inch dipole tweeter and a 6.5 inch woofer. And there was also a bookshelf speaker and it had a frequency response of 55 to 20,000 hertz. Oh, and you hear the cat down there. He's, you want to be in the show, kitty? <laughs> now that bookshelf speaker contained a, uh... oh, let's see. I have it written down here. Lost my place. It contained a uh, 1.7 inch monopole tweeter and a 6.5 inch woofer. And there were a few other manufacturers that made uh, the uh, systems using the linium tweeters. And uh, Kenwood did. They had um, LS9E, it was a two way three speaker system. They had an LS. 70, which was a two-way three-speaker system, and they made a uh, LSV710 three-way four-speaker system, and a LSV510 three-way three-speaker system. Now Toshiba, interesting enough, also made a few similar speaker systems using the technology. They had a SST6200 and a SSC5300. The SST6200 was a two-way base reflex ported system with a linium tweeter and the SSC5300 was a center channel two-way base reflex system with dual tuned front ports and a monopole linium tweeter. Now, of course, we all know about Radio Shack. They sold several speaker types, which used the uh, linium tweeters. The infamous Optimus Pro LX5 with a dipole linium tweeter and a five inch woofer. The Op Optimus Pro LX8 had a dipole tweeter and an eight inch woofer. The Optimus Pro LX10 had a dipole tweeter and two 7-inch woofers. Then we had the Optimus Pro X77. It had a monopole tweeter and a 5-inch woofer. And then they, lastly, they made the Optimus Pro LX4. It had a ported enclosure and a monopole tweeter with a 4-inch woofer. So as I mentioned before, if you weren't aware of uh, the new speaker systems, are being designed and made. You can purchase them by the original designer, Paul Paddock, at MC Audio Tech. They're available. These are very high-end speakers, and they contain an array of the new style transducers, which they now call the MC Audio Tech Wideband Line Source Transducer, or WBLS Transducers. Now these are used in their TL8, TL12, and 4010 loudspeaker systems. In Paul's white paper that he has written, he states that 
my original invention, patented in 1985, married a twin cylindrical diaphragm driven at its junction by a vertical wire loop located between a twin magnetic gap voice coil system. This device was offered by the Lenium Corporation from the late 1980s through much of the 1990s. The early 2000s impact airflow loudspeaker later employed a slightly different design with a single membrane, again my design. Since that time, I have continued to develop and improve the concept, resulting in the WBLS transducer, which exhibits greatly enhanced bandwidth sensitivity and re by re reliability. So therefore you have it, an interesting design that was started years ago and improved and improved as years went by. Uh, and it would be, like I said, it would be really a treat to hear those new speaker systems, but uh, you'd have to find, a, I assume, an audio show close by to do that because obviously they're, they're not going to be available from my pocketbook. <laughs> hey, I'm sound from the regular guy. I try to do things the least cost that I can do to satisfy my ears. But if you have any questions, comments, um, if any of you have any experience with these newer loudspeakers, that would be interesting to hear from you, to hear what you think of them and how they work. So that's it for now. God bless and have a good day.